welcome to the first episode of the Ann Layton Inclusion interview show. And the show is about figuring out the difference between kindness and cruelty. And I think we'll be talking more about recognizing kindness. Tina Jackson is in town this weekend. She'll be speaking and selling her book. It's a new book, Love Don't Hit. And it's Friday? Okay, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Hi, Tina. How are you? Hi. Hi there. And how hey. are you? I'm great. I I really am. I hope you're well. Definitely. I know your site for this Saturday, May 25th, 2024, 5 p.m. at the Sisters Uptown Bookstore, which is at 1942 Amsterdam Avenue at 156th Street. Yes, Love excited. <laughs> Show that book again. Love Don't Hit is Tina's second book with her first yes. an autobiography about recovering from 38 diseases through nutrition. And that was published in 2015. It was called The Fight for My Life. Love Don't Hit is a novel. Amazing. Yes. And that's going to be at Linktree. You can find it at Linktree forward slash Jackson Tina 578. Tina is my first ever co-host, conversationalist, <laughs> interviewee for the Ann Layton podcast, uh, Ann Layton Inclusion interview show. We've been friends for a long time. She used to live in the Bronx and now uh, she's in Virginia, we've been lifting each other up and I'm really grateful because you put me, you, you helped me survive through some rough times. And yes. uh, I know, I know you, I was, First, yeah. I did not know that you were going through hard times when um, you sent me a note, but I'm blown away because you've kept up this momentum because people keep coming to your book signings. How are you doing it? What inspires your writing and who do you love? Wow. <laughs> well, you, you know, a, what? Tell me. No, I was gonna say it was weird because ever since I was a little girl, I was always like very quiet and withdrawn, and I used to just imagine myself writing a story about a little girl. Mm -hmm. So I think it started in childhood, but then, you know, as life went on, I got distracted from it. Like I really never thought about it again in life until I turned in my fifties. So yeah, it was always it was always there though. Well, I think we're gonna talk a little bit about you and I, I gotta ask you because the, I before we get into the solid interviews, I'm also dealing with topics like politics. Uh, when it, there's inclusion, we have a, a state senator Gustavo Rivera who's also mm -hmm. gone through his share of bad politics when he was wow. running for office. But I really appreciate, I went to the Shred event and they handed out some sheets about different projects he's doing, including a meeting May 31st um, online. With oh, wow. Staff, yeah, where we can just answer questions. And I, I like the fact, and it's not translating well on the internet because of my background, but I like the fact that he includes not just email newsletters, but physical handout that his events. Have you, did you ever meet any of the local politicians and did, did you have a favorite one or an interesting story? Well, back in the day when I was in the Bronx, I used to do a lot of vending because I used to sell my skin product. And mm -hmm. I do remember meeting a politician and we took a picture of him, actually. Um, I still have the picture on Facebook. I just can't remember his name. I don't know if it was this gentleman or if it was somebody else, but I did meet one one time. And then I met one out here in Virginia. Um, her, she was doing her book signing. Her name is Tina Vick. And uh, her name of her book is called Growing Up Vic. And Michael Vic is her, her brother. Oh, wow. So, so, yeah, they had a picture of him uh, when he was doing the football and everything. Well, so that, I hope 
amazing. <laughs> I hope the best for both of them, that's for sure. I think also with leadership, I've been watching, I watch television, and what I love doing is watching an episode, a, a TV series from beginning to end. And, and right now, I'm on the second season of a show called Daniel Dean Boone. What do you think? Oh, of wow. I see him. Yeah. I remember him from my childhood. <laughs> on the show too, right? Yeah. A long time ago. <laughs> I think I, just, we were... I remember him. I think when we were kids, we didn't, we, we, we were more aware of the kids, but now I'm watching the show in retrospect and mm. I'm watching it and, and actually seeing leadership stories, but the, the, wow. one of the last episodes I left, there was an Indian lady that lied about witnessing one of Daniel's friends murder somebody. He didn't, his friend didn't, but it it was wow. like how could you lie and then there was another episode the perilous journey and in that episode i saw uh, some people that were trying to kill daniel before he delivered a really important message to mm -hmm. the British who were in louisiana and, and the british people were trying to stop daniel they came across as villains and they actually started criticizing some of his integrity like Oh, he has a reputation of a man of integrity, and we're going to deliberately come late because he's a loyal man and he's apt to be patient. But we'll surprise him and get him. That mm. just, they were deliberately being mean, and it's like, wow, yeah. So nowadays, I'm finding lots of ego issues on great TV shows. Where where are you finding some of the ego issues in? in the world what well what what i what bothers me is it seems like when we grew up we grew up with good tv that has messages that were of importance right. now it just seems like television is just trash i mean with the reality shows with the the cursing and the violence and it's just so unnecessary like there nothing is being taught it's just garbage and that really bothers me i can't even watch it like and to me they say call it reality shows but it actually looks fake right. yeah it, it doesn't look real at all well it's so not like, yeah it's not real it, it's and they make and they want these women to fight and just it, it's just so trifling i know i know it's it is frustrating yeah. yes so I, I try i like to look for stuff that's gonna i look at stuff that's gonna teach me something that I can learn something from that I can be edified with because whatever we put into our spirit, that's what becomes us. So I, I just can't look at that. I, I just have to look for always for the positive. And I know that you're reading this Saturday night, May 25th, 5 PM at sisters uptown. And that's a picture of the neighborhood where the sisters is. <laughs> Yeah, I went to Google Maps. So, <laughs> Street, 1942 Amsterdam Avenue, Cross Street, 156th Street. The other off authors are Arlene Jameson and Rhonda Lyles. Yes. What What can we expect with the reading? Well, the amazing thing about those two women is that we've been friends for, me and Arlene have been friends for about 40 years. And me and Rhonda has been friends for about 26 years. And none of us ever talked about writing a book. And then what ended up happening was we each wrote our book around the same time span. So it like, we were amazed. We were like, what? Like we never even imagined so that's when we decided, you know, we're going to be the three sisters of writing and we're going to uh, do book signings together. And Arlene Jamison, she's a children's book author. So she's going to be there in a in a costume for children and she's going to give out lollipops. And um, Rhonda, she's actually written her 13th book and she writes about um, inspirational. She writes about drama. She writes about battling rheumatoid arthritis 
different things like that. So that's how we kind of came together with it. That's excellent. How did you start writing? How old were you? Actually, I wrote my first book in 2016. 2015 is when I started it. And by 2016, I published it, which was only a few years ago. Um, it, it started because, well, this is how it's really started. I was in Miami. It was 2009. And I remember I was on, I wanted to go see the alligators. Don't ask me why I wanted to go see okay. them. I would never do that again. So we go to this boat over the swamps and the alligators are in the water. And I remember being on the boat and being, and thinking, why am I here? Like these things are right there. And anyway, I remember there was a little girl, she kept crying, crying, no one could console her. So I asked her parents, can I could try to help her? So I got her to stop crying. And as I was over the water, I heard the voice of the Lord. And he said, when you get back to New York, I want you to work on writing a book about surviving domestic violence. I want you to get a website and I want you to get your driver's license. And when I heard that, I was all excited and I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna write a book. But when I came back to New York, I couldn't do it. It was so traumatic trying to write about it. So I actually never wrote the book, never got the license and never did the website. And so what ended up happening was I got started getting very, very sick with all these different diseases. So instead of writing the domestic violence book, I just wrote about the 38 diseases. But what I really I believe I'm meant to do is write about toxic relationships and domestic violence. So while this novel is not my story, it's somebody's story. And then my story will come through poetry. I hear you. So that's how it actually started. <laughs> Do you want to read something from Love Don't Hit for us? Sure, why not? It's a very racy, edgy book. Um, it even has some profanity in it, which was hard for me because uh, I don't curse, but um, I, I had to make the story real, you know? Okay. So, uh, yeah. Um, let me see. So let's see. I have two young ladies who read it and they said they literally read the book within four hours. So, um, yeah. All right, so let me see. All right, um, let me see. Okay, I'll read this. So this was, um, uh, she had just got assaulted by Raquel. It's about a, a story about Raquel and Tori, and they're both very successful business-oriented people. She Raquel owns her own company, and Torian owns a mechanic shop. But due to the abuse he saw growing up, he's very violent and very angry. He's, like, filled with rage. Mm -hmm. So he had just beat her up. And so now she has to go to work. So that's a horrible thing, which something I lived through. And so that's what this little part is about. Raquel drove to work with a full face of stage makeup on so that none of the abuse would show itself. She just hoped and prayed that no one would notice. Raquel decided to work behind closed doors in her office. She got to work extra early to avoid eye contact with anyone. As soon as she pushed open the large glass doors, she spotted Trisha sitting at her desk. Trisha was an excellent employee. On most days, she was the first one on the job. She would watch all the employees drag into work, looking defeated even before the day started. Not Trisha though, she was always bright eyed and bushy tailed with her green eyes sparkling. When Miss Fortune got off the elevator and pushed through the glass doors, Trisha was at her desk and noticed, noticed that Raquel's gait was off balance and her face, her face was very tight lipped, not relaxed and sunny like she usually looked. When Raquel went through the second door to her office, Trisha bounced up as if she had been caught stealing something. Good morning, Miss Fortune. Are you all right, ma'am? She asked. 
Yes, good morning, Trisha, Raquel said without even looking at her. Raquel felt that even with dark glasses on, Trisha could tell she could see her sins behind the dark shades. Raquel quickly grabbed the mail. I'll be in my office all day, Trisha. Please handle my affairs and I'm unavailable if anyone asks. Raquel started walking to her office. Trisha was right behind her as she unlocked the door. Yes, Trisha, what is it? Raquel said she felt annoyed as if Trisha was invading her space. I need to talk to you, ma'am. It's imperative, please, Trisha blurted out. Can we please talk about this later or tomorrow? I'm very busy today. I'll be brief, Trisha looked perplexed. Okay, come, come in and make it quick, please. Raquel put down her briefcase and her designer bag, took off her sunglasses and faced Trisha. What's happening, Trisha, Raquel asked. Trisha gasped in horror. Oh my God, ma'am, what happened to your face? Raquel took one step back. What? Trisha spoke, ma'am, I know what is going on. Please talk to me. And that's where I'll end it. End it right there. <laughs> No, I know, I know. There's a, from Daniel Boone, actually, when a man's heart is full of fire, sparks fly out of his mouth. And we'll add his fingers. That is, that's True. really well written, well done. Did you have writing Thanks. coach or did you just do it? I just did it. I, I've never even taken a writing class until just recently. I just took like a little workshop. Mm -hmm. But I've never taken any kind of writing or had a coach or anything. It's amazing. Tell me about book promo. I mean, how much social media do you use to promote yourself? And I know that you're mailing out newsletters to us. You sent me a press release at yes. a fire. And that's yeah. where I got excited. I mean, you were sending me two months ago a flyer for the book signing. Yeah, I've been promoting it for a while because this has been my dream for literally for 30 years. I've been wanting to do a business, but what I wanted to do was like a hair salon and that never worked. I never could find the support system to help me make it happen. So it it's just like, I it's like a love unrequited. It just never happened. So for 30 years, I've been trying to keep trying to do different things. And then it's like, I feel like when the book happened, this is it, this is my baby. This is what I meant to do. So that's why I am constantly talking about it, promoting it because I really want the world to read about it because I feel it's something very important. I feel people don't even realize they're being abused. And I think we have to put a face to it. it we, it's, it's too much secrecy behind it. And we have to acknowledge what this abuse is doing to others. It's destroying people. That's why there's people right now strung out on drugs. They, they can't even be a good parent. Just so many things because of different abuse that they have been through. Yeah, I've sort of got a dark side periodically at home where I ruminate on, I, you know, I did not hurt this person or what did this person do to me? What did this person do to me? And I'll be asking myself that. And I have to literally go, well, I have to recognize it and say, what did I do today? As opposed to what did this person do? I have to find a different pronoun. To say, yes. What did somebody do? What did I do today? So I know exactly what you're saying, but you know what? Give me some cosmetology advice. Are there one or two really good skincare secrets that you live with? Oh, definitely. Well, having just turned 60, which I am mortified at, um, I, I have a few good secrets. Actually, I'm working on a an anti-aging book as well. That'll be coming. But what I would say is face steaming. Have you ever steamed your face? Um, a few times just with a towel over my head. Is that what you Yeah, mean? yeah. Face steaming is amazing. Um, if you can get like even a professional steamer and do it like three times a week, mm -hmm. it hydrates the skin. It, uh, 
it purifies it, it pulls out toxins. It's absolutely amazing. And if you're going to do it over the pot, you can put like some lavender and yeah. you know, that's, that's, and then after you steam, you put the, you mix the lavender like with some olive oil because you got to mix it because it's very strong. And then you put lavender on, put it, rub it on your skin. Mm, how nice. So those are and two that would be amazing like, tips. Huh? That would be like lavender spray or oil? What you can, what you can do, this is what I do. Let me find it. I have, yeah. so I have a bottle right here, which uh -huh. is. Uh, oh, that is oil. Yeah, it's water. I put a little bit of avocado or olive oil in it. And then I put the lavender oil. And then basically you just spritz it all throughout the day and you just rub it in or you pat it dry oh, and it cool. keeps the skin soft in the winter and it keeps it um moisturized in this like okay it keeps it dehydrated it keeps it hydrated in the winter you know it's dry out in the winter and the summer it keeps us moisturized because it's so hot so it's very cool soothing in the heat you know you you're just somewhere outside say it's really hot and you just spritz and got, um yeah I have lavender spray that I use for the cat's moods and for my mood too. Frankly. Yeah, it's great for the mood. That's it's so very cool. calming and very relaxing. You know, just like peppermint is great. Peppermint is great for the mind to open you up, wake you up. Okay. If you're tired, you know, a lot of students use it when they're studying for college to put peppermint like on their forehead or near their ears. Mm -hmm. is very invigorating oh that's excellent yeah um, i want to take a little aside we're going to get back to your book and you in a moment sure I, to, I i i wrote a poem about spiders and i'm posting it on my working gal rock and roll page oh, as wow. soon as, yep and, and it's up there right now all right and i'll throw it in the house <laughs> but I'd love to read a little part of the poem is going to be called I Don't Want to Be Your Narcissist and it's dedicated to writer, writer, and the rest of the spiders. Wow. Because, yeah. <laughs> and, and it basically is about how the spiders killed the roaches in my apartment and they continue to do so when they appear because this is New York City. Yes. So that poem will be there and I, I wasn't very nice the when I wrote the poem. I I'm nice to the spiders. I, I like to write poems about them. I give odes to them. But one of my friends who's a wonderful singer, songwriter, folk singer, her name is Natalia Zuckerman. And I'm going to share her website with you in a moment. Uh, okay. Awesome. Yeah, because it is she's a sweetheart. And it's because her last name is spelled Z U K E R M A N. Oh, wow. I love that name, Natalia. Yeah, yeah. She's uh, just beautiful. She she looks like a ballerina. She's a pretty blonde lady. She can play slide guitar with a bottle in her finger. And I met her when she was, well, she is playing a lot with a guy named Willie Porter who's right. a singer, singer, songwriter. And Natalia always has these great adventures. She wrote a book and it's oh, wow. in Spanish and English. It's about the little things in her life. And this includes ants. And she dedicates a page to the spiders. And the spider. <laughs> wow. Um, and Los Mas uh, Picunos. It's mm -hmm. in Spanish and English, and she's just very talented. So I want to give a big plug, Natalia Zuckerman. Woo. I will definitely check her out. Visit her website, and I'll post the website. Yeah, she's just a really sweet, sweet human being for sure. And I, yeah. I just like. I like her energy. So. Yeah. It's oh. good to be around people with good energy. It makes all the difference. Yeah, you can say that again. But speaking of which, what is this? Oh, wow. <laughs> Black women authors. 
Wow. Congratulations. This is, you're the, that's you. I know that woman. Yes. Yes. We had pizza together. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, we have. Wow. At least once. Yes. Huh? I was also in the same room with you when I got a massage at, I believe that was at your apartment. Yes. Yes. The masseuse, he's going to be at the book signing as well. Oh, I'll make an appointment. Yeah. Yes, yes. I need one too. It's been a long time. <laughs> but that's a magazine for women authors to showcase their books. And um, I got to make the May cover this month. So I'm very excited. I've never been on a magazine cover ever. So I'm really, very excited about it. I'm actually waiting for my copy to come. So yes. I'm excited for you. Black yes. Authors, BWA. Well, yes. congratulations. Do you Thank know what you. you're welcome? Do you know what all your talents are? I actually do now. Um, since I've gotten older, I've had time to really get to know me. And since I left the abusive relationships alone, when you leave those relationships alone, you're really able to tap into yourself and learn who you are. And one thing I know for sure is that I'm a nurturer. So I love to nurture, especially children, you know, um, and I love to just like help adults with whether it's with relationships, whether it's with holistic eating, you know, different um, herbs that can help. I I just love to see people thrive. So basically, I I think one of my areas right now is to be like a speaker to go all around and be able to speak uh, for pay and be able to just enlighten people on what I've learned and what my journey was and help them so they they can avoid some of those pitfalls. So I'm a writer, plus I'm just like, I love to speak. And I actually love doing skincare. I mean, that's my passion too, you know? It it really is. That's nurturing you. It is when you can take someone that's had like a face full of acne, which I've done and clear their whole face up to see their happiness is, is amazing. Cause when you have any kind of acne or anything, it, it affects your self-esteem. You know, it really does. Cause I battled acne and it affected my self-esteem. I used to walk with my head down. That's how affected I was. So yeah i think it's amazing because we all have something that we want to want to improve in our bodies and in our minds and yes continue to go on that path and learn to recognize the difference between kindness cruelty what is love Mm. i think the ultimate love is the love that God gave us when he went to the cross and um, he teaches us, he taught me how to love myself because I don't think we can truly love ourselves until we really know God and until we really know who we are. So I believe his, his love is the greatest because he sacrificed his life and love for me is sacrificing yourself. Like I'll give an example Um, You don't always have to do this, but it comes in different ways. It's not always about money, but I had been saving for um, an investment and saving for a car. And my, my daughter had an emergency um, about it with her. She was about to lose, they were going to lose their apartment and their car broke. Everything happened at once. And I had to use all my money to help her. Sure. And I didn't, I didn't mind because I was helping my grandkids too, but it was a sacrifice and not many people would do that, you know, and it hurt because I didn't want to give up that money. And I think that's what love is when you can make a sacrifice beyond yourself, beyond something you really don't want to do, but you know, that person needs your help. And so you do it. It doesn't have to be even in that magnitude. It could be helping someone you see hungry on the street. It could be just listening to someone that maybe feels suicidal. You know, it comes in different ways. 
But that's what to me love is. It's a sacrifice. Would you have advice on how to be discerning to who you sacrifice for? Definitely. I think a lot of us have just the gift of discernment, but we deny it. Oh, because we'll deep. see that we'll see the signs. Yes, we'll see the signs, but we ignore it. So we're ignoring our gift of discernment. The red flags, the signs are there trying to say, look at this situation. But as women, especially, we refuse to look at it because we don't want to see it. We don't want to accept it. So yeah. people have to look at those. That's the that's the that's what God put in our gut in our to feel when something's not right. That's it. Pay attention to it. And it can save us a lifetime of heartaches if we would just listen to the discernment. It's hard to. It's really it hard. is. It is hard. Believe me, because we want what we want and we don't we don't care. It's like I have to have that, even if it's just not working, if it's everything's going crazy. And so we fight against it. We fight against it. And in the end, we end up losing anyway. You're hitting home on some things. You have a quote, when you're weak, you become prey. Yes. How so, <clears throat> okay. So I believe predators, they can almost smell that they can victimize you. So if you're a, if you're weak, like in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit, if you're like just a weak person because of whatever you've gone through, those predators can smell it. And so eventually you will become their prey. And I'll give an example. I met a man who he said all the right things. He says, I've been looking for a Christian woman. I want to get married. I want to settle down. I want this. I thought I hit the jackpot just from listening to what he said, instead of really digging in and, and saying, no, let me get to really know this person. Let me discern. So I got so caught up in what he said that when I started seeing the red flags of this wasn't right. And then this wasn't right. I was already deep in it. And I just said, I just decided to deny everything. Right. Yeah, and they blew up in my face. And in some you ways, know. did you think that he would become a better person or something like that? Huh? Did you think that he would become a better person at, at any point in your journey? Yes, yes. I, re I thought that, um, I thought we were on the same page and that he would eventually turn it around and get it together. Right. And as time went on, I saw that he was not going to turn it around. He was not getting it together. And basically what it was doing, it was sapping my strength, sapping my energy. I ended up developing high blood pressure, which I had had under control. And it just came like out of nowhere. And it was just a daily stress of trying to be with someone where you really have nothing in common. Yeah, It was like, really nothing in common, you know, and people think, well, sex is something in common. That's something so small, such a small part of the relationship. It's so much more than that. You have to be able to communicate. You have to be able to compromise and you have to have things in common. And I'll give one more example. I, I'm a person, I like to go out. I like to go to comedy clubs, karaoke, dinner, like wherever, let's go. He was a complete homebody. He didn't like to go anywhere. And it really was killing me because I was like, okay, I submitted to what he wanted, which was to stay home. And right. it made me miserable. And I'm like, as women, why do we do that? Like, if if you don't want to go out and I want to go out, well, we need to compromise. I'll stay home with you some nights. You go out with me. But with him and a lot of other people, there was no compromising. He just wouldn't do it. Did he just want to smoke pot or something like that at home? He he definitely wanted to smoke pot and he was <laughs> cheap. He would he wanted to smoke pot and he was cheap. So those two combinations are not a good mix to if you want to go out. And so I suffered because of that. And I regret it. I just I'm like, God, why didn't I walk away? And that's what a lot of women are doing. And even men, they're stuck in miserable relationships and they will not walk away. Absolutely. They'll just stay there. 
miserable. And I, now I don't understand it, but then, cause when you're in it, you can't see, you're actually like blind, but yeah, once you get blind, out of it, you can see, huh? Yeah. Yeah. All your friends see it, but it's all your hard. friends see it. Yeah. And they're like, and we have a problem with this guy or Tina, we have a problem with this guy. Why don't you see it? Right. Yeah. yeah Why yeah. don't you? It's yeah. oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> how do you recognize? How do you learn to recognize? Mwah, how do you learn to recognize this negative behavior in people? I'm going to tell you how you have to really get to, you have to really question the person. You have to be quiet and let them talk so you can hear the true character. And I would say you definitely shouldn't have sex for at least three months to even a year, because once right. you have, once you start having sex, you become muddled. You can't hear and see because we're so caught up in the emotion. Right. But when you don't have sex with them, your mind is clear. You can see things you wouldn't normally see. And it has to be questions like you have to talk, like, how is your credit? Uh, how do you feel about your mom? I mean, I found yes. out, you know what I'm saying? Once I got with the guy, I found out him and his mom didn't have a good relationship. But you I should have found out that first. Oh, my God. I had this person that I love dearly and it, he would once said to me I, I treat you and my mom the same way I, I'm oh. I, I'm cynical to everything my mom says wow I, or I pick on everything my mom says he said and I'm That's like deep. and I'm like well yeah. be nice to both of us and I thought that would change him <laughs> be nice to both of us and see, the thing is, is that he probably had a reason for being cynical to his mom, but you're not his mom. And he has to, he has to get over that because I you can, over it. it's going to affect him in, in his relationships with women. Yeah, totally. What is your self-care now? This is really an important question and it's something that will help me and everyone else. What's your self-care? Okay, well, my self-care at first is prayer to get my mind right because people will drive you crazy. <laughs> I definitely, They really will. They will drive you crazy. I definitely believe in exercise. I started exercising when I was 15 years old and I exercised through my mid-30s until I got into the domestic violence relationship and then I just lost the love for it. Sure. But then I came back to it throughout my my life on and off i've also i've always been into heavy exercise and i believe that that's one of the best things that we can do for ourselves because um it helps you to keep your body strong which will keep your mind strong and it releases endorphins which are feel good hormones so once you are feeling good you're going to just keep that's what we want they say People that have depression should exercise because it will help with the endorphins. And just also, you know, you have to, you have to treat people as how you want to be treated. So if you want people to treat you right, then you have to treat people right. And there's so many people out here doing scams and doing different things. I don't know how they think their life is going to be blessed living like that, but this is people's frame of mind. And you have to eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. Like you can't just eat processed crap all the time. I mean, I love to eat bad food too, but I still eat fruits and vegetables every day. And there's some people, they never, never, never eat fruits and vegetables. And some people never even drink water. Yeah. They're just always drinking soda, soda, juices, and juices are filled with sugar. You know, so you have to drink your H2O and you have to just at least four to five uh, veggies and fruits per day. And then you won't desire the junk st so much That's because the, that will has natural water in it. It'll help fill you up. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. Well said, well done. Link tree forward slash Jackson Tina five, seven, eight yes yes Tina is going to be a book signing 
Yay! Woo! <laughs> wow, that's that's great. Thank yes. To Amsterdam Avenue. Yes. One fifty sixth Street. I I I want everyone to visit me online as well at annlayton.com and working gal rock and roll dot blogspot dot com. Um, there are links yes. to my books, my stories, my writing, and press releases. Tina, anything you want to leave us with? Any final word? Sure, I'd love to read a poem, and then I'll uh Absolutely. definitely love to leave you leave you guys with um. Oof, yeah. So um, I find it's easier for me to write about what I went through through poetry than to actually write about it because it's so, so much pain there. And um, so this poem is called Crack Kills because my daughter's father had a crack addiction and that is what destroyed our relationship and everything. Sure. <clears throat> huh? Sure. Oh, okay. So it's called Crack Kills. It's not my fault, babe. You chose to smoke crack. For real, that's a fact. I should have fell back. You took our shot at a great life and wasted it. Now what do we got? I kept believing you changed, changed for us. But the range of violence just grew with us. Every disappointment broke me more and more. In reality, at the core, you're the broken one, and I'm just done. It's not my job to do what your mama didn't do. It's not up to me to fix you. I was your woman, not the mother who broke you. I suffered right along with you, even way worse than you, because you terrorized me daily, beaten for what? For loving you. It had gotten so bad, that it took my all to still stand. Kept my family intact, therefore I couldn't react to, be be to being beaten. I stood for my kids on my own two feet and guess what? I didn't crack. <laughs> wow. Yeah. wow, no, yes, that is so yes. effing good. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Man, well it was rough. Well done. I I was relating to stuff that you were saying in there. There was like a segment about the mental problems, and this is so true. It's it's like we're the ones when you're dealing with some of those types of people and how they think they've spit out the sh shell, you spit you out and. And we end up going to the therapist and working really hard, but it's, it's like a lot of those people are mentally ill and yeah. they never, ever, ever admit it. No, yeah. they never admit it and they never get help and they just put all their pain onto you and me. I know. And it's a hard, it, it is a heartbreak because we, Again, we hope that we could have changed them and made them better people. But yeah. we're the ones that are getting better. And I'm so glad that you were there to lift me up. And I'm also glad that among millions of others or hundreds of others, there doesn't that a bunch of folks also lifted you up because you did not crack, girl. Amen. Yeah. And you know what I wanted to bring up to you? I don't know if you remember this the very first time we met. Okay. But I remember it was Mother's Day. It was a, it was years ago. And I remember I was feeling very depressed because um, my daughter wasn't talking to me and my son had to work. And so I was just feeling just depressed. And I remember I went into the bodega and this we had not met before this. And so I was near the coffee Street. machine getting something. Uh, 204th Street, yep. Yes. So I was getting my coffee and I will never forget it. And you walked over to me and you were waiting to make the coffee. And then you said, you did a great job. You're a great mother. And I just started crying and I was telling you my, you know, my daughter doesn't speak to me. And you were like, go, go out to eat by yourself, enjoy yourself. 
And that's exactly what I did. I went to uh, the Jamaican restaurant and I ate by myself and I had a great time. Thanks to you. Oh. Cool. Well, I love you very much and I'm very grateful to you. I love I'm you gonna... too. Thank you so much. And again, this, well, if I, this, this show will be broadcast on YouTube for yeah. decades and centuries to come. Yes. But in 2024, this Saturday, May, no, Saturday, May 25th, which at, as we tape this, that's two weeks from now, but Saturday, May 25th, 5 p.m. at Sisters Bookstore. And what a great name for a bookstore. 1942 yes. Amsterdam Avenue. I'm going to post a lot of info about the show description below. I want to say I'm enjoying the show and I'm enjoying meeting people. Yes. I think you get better at using inclusion skills as we all try to lift each other up and listen to friends when they're unsure or down. Thank you, Tina Jackson. And I'm grateful that Thank you. you. Huh. It was fantastic being here. <laughs> and I'll see you on the 25th. Thank you. Yes.